Hey bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you my book diary covering part two of Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. So if you've seen these book diaries before and you know my little spiel that I give at the very beginning of all of these videos, feel free to skip this part. I do have timestamps in the description box with chapter breakdowns so you can jump to whatever chapters you want. But for those of you who haven't seen my book diaries before and have no idea what this video is, this is basically a very spoilery reading vlog covering when I was reading part two of Rhythm of War. So if you don't know, Stormlight Archive books are split into five parts. This video is covering the part of the book that is literally labeled part two. It is quite long and I sort of apologize apologize for that but also I think that part two of the book itself was quite long. I think by the end of this book we're almost like halfway through Rhythm of War so there was a lot to cover. My point is don't watch this video if you haven't read part two of Rhythm of War, at least if you haven't started part two because like I said I do have chapter breakdowns down below. Some people like to read a few chapters and then watch my reaction or my vlog for those chapters and kind of go back and forth or you know you can wait till you've read all of part two before watching this video, whatever you want to do. Also in the comment section just be careful of spoiling anything. Feel free to leave spoilers for things that happen or that we know through the end of part two, but try not to spoil things that we find out later in the book or in the series because eventually there will be more books in this series. Also, I do a lot of theorizing and like trying to predict what's gonna happen or just like talking out loud about theories and world building things. Try not to correct me in the comment section unless it's something that we figure out before the end of part two because again, I just don't want anybody who's only read through part two getting spoiled in the comment section reading something that somebody said. If you wanna talk spoilers, I have finished the book at this point I finished it like in December feel free to direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter because I'm happy to talk spoilers there and one last thing if you like the format of this video I do have a whole playlist of book diaries that I've done some for the Wheel of Time books as well as a couple of other books and as far as Stormlight Archives I started making these partway through the second book in the series so I don't have them for the first book or for part of the second book but I do have them for the rest of the series and I will have them through the end of Rhythm of Wars so you can check out the playlist if you want more book diaries. That's enough of an intro here we go with my thoughts on part two of Rhythm of War. Okay so I have read the three interludes so time for a check-in. The first one we get I won is from Selfrena's point of view or Self's point of view and I absolutely loved seeing from her point of view. I'm not sure if we've seen from her point of view before. I feel like maybe it's happened once but definitely not something that's happened very often. I thought it was so sweet that she asked both Stormfather and Dalinar if they could help her understand Kaladin's depression more because she thinks that she could understand him better if she knew what it felt like. She also talks to Dalinar about his powers and says that his powers are what made the original Oath Pack, which we recently learned in a previous chapter, and that Oathbringers existed long before the Knight's Radiance were founded. A bondsmith connected with a capital C, the Herald to Braes, which we know is another planet, made them immortal and locked our enemies away. A bondsmith bound other surges and brought humans to Roshar, fleeing their dying world. A bondsmith created, or at least discovered, the Nahal Bond, the ability of Spren and humans to join together into something better. You connect things with a capital C, Dalinar. Realms, ideas, people. Interesting. I don't totally understand that, but interesting. <laughs> And then the next interlude, I too, was from Ja Anat's point of view, which is the unmade that is sort of like switching sides or trying to trick Odium, which we learned more about in this interlude. But there was something in particular I wanted to point out. Here it is. She didn't fully understand the laws that bound him. They were ancient and related to compacts between the shards, the high gods of the Cosmere. Odium wasn't simply the mind that controlled the power, the vessel, nor was he merely the power alone, the shard. He was both. And at times it seemed the power had desires that were counter to the purposes of the vessel. So that's a little bit 
more of an explanation of like what a shard is and how that relates to odium. Still don't totally understand it, but it sounds like odium is the power, which is a shard, but also a mind that controls that power. There's also a little bit about how they're like playing mind games with each other. Basically, odium knows that she's trying to trick him, but she's trying to trick him in multiple ways or layers like she knows that he knows about some things but she's hoping that that distracts him from some of the other things that she's doing that are really trying to undermine him but she hopes that he doesn't find out about those things so that was a little bit of a mind f but interesting and i am very curious to know more about shaja anand oh there was one more thing she talked about the sibling she called it her cousin and then also the slumbering child of honor and cultivation so Odium, Honor, and Cultivation are like the three gods on Roshar. And somehow Honor and Cultivation made another, like, I want to think of it as like a really powerful spren, kind of like Ja Anat and the Thrill, although the Thrill is more like mindless. But also the Night Watcher, the Night Watcher is of Cultivation, and that's kind of like a really powerful spren. So there's another one called the Sibling that is like, I guess, a mix of cultivation and honor or something. And then Stormfather is from honor. But then Odium has nine of them. They're like all the unmades, I guess. I don't know, it's confusing. And then we have a Teravangian interlude. It was kind of sad, but also it's hard for me to be sad for Teravangian. But basically he knows that he's going to die. So he says bye to all of his like friends and helpers which is really sad a little bit. Some of them are like crying and I didn't like that. But he is going to go with Dalinar to this battle and he like already knows that he's going to betray Dalinar and they're gonna know that he betrayed them and that they're going to kill him. And so he's just going because he knows that that's what's gonna happen, but he doesn't care because what he set out to accomplish, which is to preserve his city and his family, is supposedly done because Odium promised him that they would be okay. So that was kind of like a sad but I wish I wasn't sad about it chapter. <laughs> All right, time to read some more and I will check in with you guys soon. Okay, so I've read chapter 21 and 22. 21 was from Shalon's point of view and she was like picking out who she wanted to go on their mission to Shadesmar. One thing that stood out to me in that chapter is Shalon had a sudden bout of nausea in that chapter. So, I mean, she's got to be pregnant, right? Like, Sanderson wouldn't just throw that in there and that not mean anything. Maybe it's a red herring. Maybe he's trying to trick us. But that's obviously what jumped into my head is that Shalon is pregnant. The other interesting thing was that Mray sent her this silver cube, I think it was silver, that she can use to communicate with him when she's in Shadesmar because span reads won't work. So that's interesting. She has a way to communicate with him, but she's gonna have to do it secretly. She even says like, I don't know how I'm gonna keep this a secret from Adolin, but I'm gonna have to somehow. So excited to see that in action. Then 22 was in Adolin's point of view. A few interesting things there. He went to go visit Kaladin. It seems like Kaladin's doing a little bit better with his depression now that he is being a surgeon again or back in training for being a surgeon and he's like surrounded by his family and stuff. I once again love seeing Adolin and Kaladin's relationship. Adolin is teasing Kaladin about how many light-eyed women all of a sudden have like headaches and stuff and Kaladin says that he thought it was kind of suspicious or funny or he didn't know why but it's because he's an eligible bachelor at this point. Another thing was that one of the radiants that Shalon had picked out for their mission is not going like his wife got sick and so another one named Beryl is going to go in his place and in Shalon's chapter she or Vale had said that if she didn't pick out the spy that Maraise has in her light weavers that she's sure he will still find a way to make them come. And so the fact that one of the Lightweavers changed at the last minute makes me think that's the spy. 
but that could also be what Sanderson wants us to think, so maybe that's another red herring. But I'm definitely suspicious of this barrel lady, but also I feel like that's really obvious because Sanderson literally pointed it out in the chapter before that that might happen. So I feel like it's too obvious and not necessarily Sanderson's style. So I'm not sure about that one. And then the chapter ended with Dalinar saying bye to Adolin. That was a really interesting conversation. Adolin obviously has a lot of mixed feelings about his father and pent up emotions about the fact that Dalinar killed his mom even though it was on accident. Like he feels guilty for being mad at his dad for that but he is kind of mad at his dad for that. And then also Dalinar basically tells Adolin that he wants him to become a Radiant and Adolin doesn't appreciate that because he has a lot of pressures on him already and he is surprisingly happy with his life the way it is. And I say surprisingly because I would have thought that he would want to be a Radiant because so many people around him are Radiants. Like I would think that he feels left out and wants to join them, but from what I just read it sounds like he's happy with the way things are and he doesn't want the pressure to become more than what he already is, which I could understand that perspective as well. So yeah, it seems like Dalinar and Adolin have a little bit of a rockier relationship than I was really thinking. Okay, time to get this Shadesmar adventure kicked off. I just finished chapter 22 and they're in Shadesmar, which is so exciting. I just think Shadesmar is so cool. It's just so unique and different. Sanderson's just so good at world building and coming up with really unique ideas for stuff. One of my hopes for this book, for Rhythm of War, was to see more of Maya. I definitely got more Maya in this chapter. I love where this is going. She definitely seems to be able to understand Adolin. She even, at the end of the chapter, basically volunteers to help brush Adolin's horse. And the other Spren that are with them are really confused and don't understand why she's acting that way because they wouldn't expect a dead Spren or a dead eye, I think is what they called her to act that way. So uh, that's really exciting and so interesting. Also, the horse, it's one of those special horses, a Rashidium or something. It has a trail of light behind it when it's in Shadesmar, which is really interesting. I wonder why. It kind of reminds me of Seth when he's in the real world. After he died and came back to life, he has like a faint trail of light behind him. So I don't know if those are somehow related, but that's what it made me think of. Also, the very end of the chapter, Shalon's cube that she had packed away, it's been moved or touched. So Shalon thinks slash knows that the spy that Mraes has is definitely on the mission with them and that they went through her stuff and used her cube. Which I'm kind of surprised by, but I guess maybe Marais only has one cube. Because I was thinking they would just have their own cube, but maybe those cubes are hard to find or something. But really hard to believe that someone was able to get through her stuff and is like planning to be able to use that cube again and again. I mean, Shalon should just keep it on her, like in a pocket or something, in her safe hand pouch or whatever because then nobody could use it. But very curious to find out who this spy is. Like I said, it could be that barrel chick, but that seems too obvious and obvious is not Sanderson style. So I wonder who it is. Okay, I just finished 25. 24 was in Shalon's point of view mostly, I believe. They are in Shadesmar. But the one thing from that chapter that I thought was really sweet and important was that Shalon actually admitted to Adolin that the whole reason why she sought out Yasna in the first place was because she was trying to steal her soul caster and they have this really sweet conversation like Shalon's like nervous that Adolin is going to think of her differently or judge her for it and he just laughs it off and is like wow really that's crazy they like laugh together about it and I really liked that interaction as much as I was a Kaladin and Shalon fan Adolin and Shalon are definitely growing on me I mean at this point I feel like I just have to accept it because I think the ship is over, like I don't think it's really a love triangle anymore, even though that makes me sad. But anyways, that was a really cute scene. And then chapter 25 was in Caliban's point of view, and it was 
kind of intense and dark. So Kaladin goes looking for this patient who has gone to or been sent to the Ardents who deal with people who have like psychological problems like depression. <laughs> Apparently they don't really do anything to help them. They just lock them up in these rooms with no sunlight because they think that if they aren't disturbed that they'll get better. And obviously that doesn't really work and so Kaladin finds a new calling he wants to help people who are like dealing with depression and probably other psychiatric things but he's like excited about it and I'm so happy for him so even though that chapter was kind of dark and intense because Kaladin and the guy he went to go look for kind of talk about what it's like to have depression and have suicidal thoughts and stuff. It ended in a really good way and I'm excited to see Kaladin in this new role and having like this new purpose. I'm happy about that. All right, it is time for bed. Okay, so I just finished chapter 30 and I have a few thoughts. Let's see. Um, okay, Navani's chapter was super interesting. She was contacted again by this mysterious thing that was using that span raid that showed up in her room earlier or whatever. Remember, I thought it might be a spren and I think I'm right. I mean, Navani basically thinks it's a spren now because of the conversation that they had. I think that it's the sibling. Okay, so I went back and looked at the interlude from Ja Nott's point of view, and she called the sibling the offspring of cultivation and honor. She said, or like implied, that it's in the tower, it's in Irithiru, and that it's dead slash sleeping because she told Odium that she had sent some of her spren to the tower and Odium told her that she's too obsessed with the tower or something and not to be worried about it. Right after that, she said that she's hopeful that her cousin, referring to the sibling, could be awakened or something. Anyways, I think that the spren that is talking to Navani and threatening her and telling her to stop experimenting with Fabrials. I think it might be the sibling because they were trying to figure out where or how far away whoever was on the other side of the span read was. They figured out that it was coming from inside the tower somewhere. Putting all those pieces together, I feel like that's what's going on. But that was a really cool chapter and I need to know more. Okay, and then in Shalon's point of view, we figure out that Beryl is the spy because the, you know, piece of information that Shalon planted to go back to Marais was what she had told Beryl. But even Shalon slash Vale thinks that maybe it's too obvious an answer, but it also, all the pieces fit. So I don't know, not only am I still kind of suspicious that it's too obvious, Vale and Shalon are also a little suspicious that it's too obvious, but also like who else would it be? <laughs> But then there's also all this stuff about Shalon having used one of those cubes before and repressing more memories. Definitely curious to find out what else she's hiding and why or how she would have used a cube like that before. And then Adolin, he is making a lot of progress with Maya. I'm super excited with his like storyline with Maya. I want her to come back to life or something. But all the other Spren are so surprised at like how she interacts with him and how she seems to respond to stuff because she's supposed to be dead and supposed to not think and not respond to any external stimuli. <laughs> so they're all surprised that she does. Oh, and in this like marketplace that they go to, Aelin sees another dead Spren. The other Spren that's with that dead Spren says that this one died recently and that it was like one of his friends and Adolin is confused because he's not sure why a spren would have died recently and he just kind of chalks it up to like there must have been some random radiant that broke their oaths that they don't know about. So that was super interesting. And then also Adolin runs into the honor spren that was their ship captain in the last book, the last time they were in Shadesmar. And he was punished for letting them go and was exiled from their city that I can't remember 
what is it called? Lasting Integrity. He was totally exiled for eternity <laughs> from Lasting Integrity. Adolin obviously feels bad about that. And then this Spren is also, I mean, he's understandably bitter, but he's telling Adolin basically that their plan is a lost cause and they shouldn't even bother going because they're going to be turned away immediately. So that's kind of disconcerting. <laughs> but Adolin is determined to convince the Honest Bren to work with them. So I don't know how he's going to do it, but I believe in Adolin. I think he's going to do it. He's going to make this happen, but I don't know how. All right, now it is time for bed. Okay, I just finished 31, and it was from Venley's point of view. There was some interesting world-building information. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here. She asks a bit about the powers of the fused. Raboniel tells her there are nine brands of the fused, nine surges. You know of the surges. And Venley says, the innate forces by which all life, all reality are connected. Gravitation, transportation, transformation, but I thought there were ten. I also thought there were ten because that's why there are ten orders of radiance. That is human talk, Raboniel said to Derision. They claim a tenth of honor alone. Adhesion is not a true surge, but a lie that was presented to us as one. Okay, this is what was interesting. True surges are of both honor and cultivation. Cultivation for life, honor to make the surge into natural law. Things must fall to the ground, so they created surges to make that happen. I only, like, halfway understand what he's saying. <laughs> and then she asks about the surges of these deepest ones who seem to have the ability to manipulate stone, and he says that they have cohesion, the surge of axial cohesion, the surge that binds the smallest pieces of all objects together, the surge that holds us together, the something can meld their essence into the essences of other things, intermingling their axi. And then, this was also interesting, the radians have two surges, Venley said, the fuse each have one, so are the radians more powerful? Powerful, is it better to have more abilities or to have one ability handled expertly? We of the fuse know our surge with an intimacy a radiant will never know. Humans, they were not created for these world, these surges, or these storms. Light leaks from humans like water through fingers. They get flares of great power but cannot hold what they have. One of the fuse can contain light and bask in it indefinitely. Even a regal such as you knows this power in a lesser way. Anyways, I don't need to <laughs> read the whole book to you guys. But those were some things that were interesting. There's one more thing. Oh yeah, right here. If surges are from honor and cultivation, then why do we serve odium? A dangerous question. You truly are the daughter of traitors, aren't you? Where is the answer? Which would you rather worship, a god of plants or a god of emotions? She waved to the southeast. Cultivation hides in these mountains somewhere. She is everywhere, but she is also here, alive but frightened. She knows she is not a god of people, but of creatures. And honor, a god of laws? Again, which would you prefer, a god who knows only how to make a rock fall to the ground, or a god who knows us, understands us, feels as we do. Yes, surges are bound by honor, yet as you can see, his death did not change the world in any appreciable manner. His power binds all things together, but this alone is not worthy of worship. Odium, passion, he will grant rewards. <sighs> Interesting stuff, but makes my head hurt because I don't really understand it. <laughs> uh, don't understand it. Anyways, it sounds like Benley and these fused are on their way to Urethiru, which is... Kind of concerning, because I'm pretty sure Dalinar and most of the army is leaving Urethiru. So, like, who's going to be there to protect the people that are there? I don't know. Oh, man. I just finished chapter 34, and it was such a sweet chapter with Adolin and Shallan, like, getting to know each other better and just, like, bonding. They're definitely growing on me. I didn't want them to be together, especially after the last book ended. I just thought that the love triangle ended so abruptly, but they are growing on me. They are cute together. Adolin's just so supportive of her and her three personalities and everything, and she's so understanding of him and his, like, daddy issues <laughs> and stuff. Ugh, I like them. And Adolin told this really funny story about 
his first crush and how she talked about how she really liked swords and he bought her a sword not realizing it was an innuendo so that was a really funny story i think that's all from this chapter oh actually no there was this thing here whenever no what's his name notum the honor spren and when he's leaving adolin points out that he's never seen a spren in the shape of a horse Notum says, not all spren were imagined by men, Adolin Colin. I think what he's saying is that that spren was imagined by like a Rochadium, the, the horse that Adolin has. I don't know. There's something weird about those horses, obviously. They seem like really intelligent and everything. But also Adolin said something about how in Shadesmar it has like a shadow, like a, a trail of light behind it. I don't know. I wonder if what this Notum was saying is that his like spren that looks like a horse was imagined by another horse, maybe. I don't know. Oh, and then in the chapter before this, it's a really short chapter, but we see Kaladin start doing like therapy with a group of depressed and suicidal men and he thinks it's working and his mom... It's like, where did you get this idea? And he's basically just pulling from his own experiences of having been a slave and being a depressed person himself. And I just, this made me really happy. Okay, time for bed. I just finished chapter 35 and that was kind of intense. Ugh. I also figured out that the humans were after Notum, like right after Adolin did. After Adolin did, but before Sholan did. And I was so worried about him. So I'm glad that Adolin went to save him and... Adolin is just, he's so selfless. I couldn't believe he did that. He barely knows Notum. He had a line, something about like, you know, if he died, that he didn't need to be the one to deliver the letters, like the rest of them could deliver letters. But this is something that he could do to help. I'm so glad he's okay. I was very nervous because obviously it was overwhelming odds against Adolin. But when Maya showed up and was like against his back and he thought he was about to get stabbed again and it was Maya, I thought it was going to be Shallan. I thought that the group had caught up to them. Only to find out that it was Maya and then he was able to get her to kind of like do some of the kata forms or whatever. That was really cool. I love that Maya is like showing some... I don't know if initiative is the right word, but she's like doing things, even though people don't think she should be able to. So like that is super cool. She came to protect him and I really love that. And Adolin just really stole my heart in this chapter by going to the defense of this spren that he barely, I mean, yeah, the spren helped him out the last time they were in Shadesmar, but I mean, he doesn't know him that well. That was really cool. That was a good chapter. Oh, I haven't read further, but I just had a thought. I bet that Adolin going to the rescue of Notum is like this, you know, honorable act that gets the honor spread to like listen and want to help. It's not like the intention Adolin had behind it. And the only hesitation I have about that is the fact that Notum has been exiled. So maybe they won't care as much. I feel like Notum's going to go with them to the city that I'm blanking on the name of. I don't know, he's exiled, he's not supposed to go. But I feel like he will go and speak on their behalf and say that Adolin saved his life when he didn't have to. And then that's gonna make the Honor Spren agree to help the humans. That's my prediction. Okay, I finished 36 and I have been proven wrong. What I was guessing is not how that panned out. Adolin basically sacrificed himself. I mean, hopefully that's not what ends up happening, but he convinces the honor spren to let him stand like trial for his ancestor's sins. <laughs> that does not sound good. I mean, I'm guessing that the trial will go well and that he will somehow prove that they can't honorably hold him accountable for something that happened thousands of years ago. And maybe it'll all work out but he can also only take three people in with him that makes me very nervous very nervous what is he thinking oh no i'm so nervous i just read 37 the fused have started their attack on the tower and nobody in the tower knows that they're coming well i think that navani got a message from the soldiers that were being attacked at the very bottom so I think she has a little bit of a heads up. 
but they have no idea that there are these fuse that can like walk through the stone basically and come out of nowhere. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Looks like Calvin's gonna get a chance to fight though. Okay, see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, 38 and <laughs> this is not good. The fused were successful in inverting the defenses of the tower and basically making it so that the Radiants can't use their powers and now they're like attacking. I mean, they were already attacking, but they're trying to like really seize the tower now and like nobody knows. I thought that Navani got a message because she got a message about an explosion, but that was like about something totally different. A couple of her scholars were studying some fabrials or the the void light gemstone and it exploded and I think she thinks that maybe the sibling did that or something I don't know but that was totally unrelated from this attack so they didn't have any warning and now Raboniel or whatever her name is was successful in trying to corrupt the sibling like I think she didn't totally corrupt the sibling but did something enough that the Radiants aren't going to be able to use their powers, and that's really not good. And all of the soldiers are gone. They went with Dalinar. Not all of the soldiers, but a lot of them. I'm so nervous, and it's getting late. I can't read much more, but I need to read at least one more chapter. Okay, I just finished chapter 40, and things are intense. I don't even know, like, what I said in my last clip, but... A bunch of the Radiants are like unconscious and Kaladin like can't use his powers and is like super freaked out and having kind of like an anxiety attack and his dad had to like calm him down so that he wouldn't go out and try to fight the Fused because apparently the one person that they saw tried to fight the Fused, the Fused like killed immediately and so they don't think that's a good idea but it seems like his dad was able to do that so that's good. And then we switch to Navani. She figures out that it is a sibling. So like my guess at the Spren that was trying to talk to her was a sibling was correct. So that felt really good because I get a lot of predictions wrong. And now she's figured out how to talk to the sibling through like the veins in the wall or whatever. And the sibling told her that she might be able to reverse whatever's going on, but that Navani's gonna need a bunch of Stormlight. But like, Navani doesn't have powers. Is she gonna, is she about to like, become a Radiant and bond the sibling? Like, that would be really freaking cool. I don't know, I was about to go to bed, it's 11.30, and I would guess I have like, 45 minutes to an hour's left of reading to finish part three, and I don't like staying up past midnight when I can avoid it, but I don't think I can stop right now. I think I need to know what happens next. So I'm going to keep reading. Okay, I did it. I finished part three. Is it part three? Part two. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I finished part two. I mean, it is like half the book, which is chapter 43. Maybe that's why I was thinking three. Hold on. Yeah. I just finished chapter 43. Man, a lot of stuff happened. I wish I remembered what happened last time I checked in, but I don't. But I believe Navani was successful in making the shield or whatever sort of protection that the sibling was trying to get her to do with that Fabriel. She was successful in doing that, although the soldiers that she sent to fight against Raboniel died, and that was kind of sad because the, like, head of that soldier group was a nice guy and I liked him. But Navani's okay and I think it's really interesting that Raboniel is like fascinated by human engineers and Fabrials and then she offers to hire Navani to work for her and convinces her that like maybe you'll get more secrets out of me. She knows that Navani will want the knowledge and uses that to like tease her and convinces Navani to work for her so I thought that was like really interesting and I like that and I like that we saw more of the sibling and we know that she's kind of like protected from Raboniel and that Raboniel doesn't know exactly what's going on like she was like oh this is weird there's some stormlight here and there shouldn't be but she doesn't know that some sort of protection has 
been turned on for the sibling. Or maybe she kind of does know. She saw like the blue wall shield or whatever and said that that does interfere with her plans. But she doesn't know exactly what's going on. So that's good. Kaladin. <laughs> Kaladin. I am so frustrated with Kaladin. So the pursuer guy, fused guy, he's adamant that he's going to find Kaladin and kill him and obviously I was nervous about that at first but then they're looking for radiants that are unconscious and obviously Kaladin isn't because his bond is so strong and he's such a strong radiant. The sibling did tell Navani that some radiants who have a really strong bond or oaths or something, <laughs> radiants that are really strong, would be able to escape this suppressor Fabriel thing and Kaladin seems to be the only one although it looked like Tef is like close to that anyways so they're looking for unconscious radiance and so I was like okay phew Kaladin's gonna be okay I was a little worried that someone would out him like one of the humans would be worried that if they didn't out him that they would get found out and get in trouble but it didn't even get that far because freaking Kaladin revealed himself and killed one of the regals and now he has to go into hiding all because he didn't want them to take Teft I mean I get that he thought they were gonna kill Teft but we knew that they were not gonna kill Teft they were just going to put all the radiance in the same place which is exactly what Kaladin's dad said that they might have been doing and then Kaladin and his dad get in this big fight and now Liren thinks that his son is a monster, and I do really like that at the end, Kaladin was like, if I was a monster, I would have killed that other singer, because that's true, too. But, like, freaking control yourself, Kaladin. Everything was fine. Everything was fine. You just had to be quiet and stay in the room. And you go and do something stupid like this. It reminds me of when, I mean, this isn't, nearly the same thing but in I think it was in book two when Kaladin gets offered the shard blade and shard plate from Adolin and he turns it down and gives it to Moash like I was just so disappointed in Kaladin in that moment and so frustrated with him and that's how I feel again <laughs> like Kaladin why would you do this this is stupid obviously it's a little bit different but still I have disappointment <laughs> Oh my god, and now I need to go to bed. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of part two, which is like pretty much halfway through Rhythm of War, I believe. So much stuff happened in this part. I like to end these videos talking a little bit about my favorite scenes or my favorite moments in the section. It's quite hard for me to pick for this one because I just enjoyed so much of it. I won't say part two was my favorite part out of the whole book, but it was one of my favorite parts. Like, I mean, it's hard to beat the ending, right? But so much stuff happened in part two that I really enjoyed, which I feel like might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. I feel like a lot of people don't like the things that happened in part two. I don't know. I think there are people on both sides. But the things in part two that I liked, I definitely liked the Shadesmar stuff. Like, I love Shadesmar. I just think it's so interesting. I'm very invested in Adolin's, like, mission. So I really enjoyed that part of the story. But I also really enjoyed everything that happened at the tower and with Kaladin. Oh, and some of that stuff at the end, you could tell I got really worked up about Kaladin revealing himself and having to go into hiding. I was so frustrated with that. But I also was like really happy to see Kaladin training to be a surgeon and then finding this passion for helping people with mental illness and stuff. Like I loved all of that. And then there was also just like so much world building stuff that we were told. Stuff that you could see I was having trouble wrapping my head around, but I was kind of thinking through it and it just, I loved learning all the things that we learned and the world not necessarily opening up more but just feeling like I'm understanding more of the world that we have been like speculating on for so long I mean still speculating for a lot of it there was so much to love about the section I really can't pick a favorite scene or anything because I loved all of those things that I just mentioned let me know down in the comment section what your favorite part of part two was did you like the shades more stuff or did you find that the least interesting bit? Were you frustrated when Kaladin outed himself, basically? I mean, I, I understand why he did it, but I find that that's something a lot of people have different opinions on. Some people are like, definitely on Kaladin's side, and some people are like me, or we're like, 
frustrated with him. So I'm curious what you guys thought about that. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. I definitely will have more book diaries for the rest of Rhythm of War coming out in the next, I don't know, month or so. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye.